Millions of tyres are produced, sold and used every year in the UK. All of them need to be disposed of when they reach the end of their useful lives. Often they're simply burnt as fuel. Sometimes, alas, they're left as eyesores on fly tips. Rubber is an extremely versatile and useful material, being used in many industries, not just by the automotive industry. The tyre is not just composed of rubber, it is in fact made from nylon and rayon fibres and steel too. Rubber accounts for around 70% of the tyre, fibres approximately 20% and steel the remainder. It is the steel and fibre bound together within the tyre that gives it its strength and performance. Tyrogenics is the only company in Northern Europe using cryogenic processing to recycle tyres. Its process is geared to recycling not only the rubber, but the fibre and steel too. Established in 2007, it uses very low temperature freezing technology to help separate the reusable materials within the tyre. Supervisors Darren Rennick and Mark Rees have been with Tyrogenics in Bagland since the company started. We asked them to explain the process and to show us around the plant. Hello, my name's Darren and this is my colleague Mark. We're both supervisors here at the Tyrogenics plant in Bagland. Today we're going to show you the process of turning this into this through our cryogenic process. Tyrogenics here in Bagland is quite unique. It's the only cryogenic plant in Northern Europe, originated from Canada, which I went in the early stages to bring back all the technology to start this plant up in Wales. Most people think of tyres just being made of rubber, but during Tyrogenics, we know that it's made of three components. The rubber itself, which is useful, and we extract from it the metal and the fibre. This is chip as we know it in Tyrogenics. It's a 50 mil cross section of tyre sent to us by Credential. This is the first part of the process where the chip leaves the hopper and starts going up the belt into the cryo tunnel. This here is the feed conveyor to the cryogenic tunnel. On the conveyor you can see that there's a metal detector. This ensures that no large foreign steel objects can get up there into the tunnel, but at the same time allows the steel within the chip to pass through to get removed from the tyre chip itself. Here we have the cryogenic chamber. The cryogenic process is a process of the introduction of nitrogen to a product to reduce its temperature to be able to break it down. The chip travels through the chamber and is introduced to temperatures of down to minus 170 degrees. At this point, the chip is cold enough to, for us to break down into the three elements which Mark spoke about earlier through the next part of the process. At this point, the frozen tire chips drop down from the cryo tunnel, drops into these hammers, 96 hammers running at 300 foot a second and get smashed up and drop down into the bottom of the auger. This is the main control panel. This controls everything within the whole factory. This actually shows the start system from the hopper outside from earlier to the hammers, from the primary screeners, through to the dryer, the caissons and all the fans. This shows every piece of kit so we can monitor it closely. This is the main brain of the factory. Next to it, we have the fire safety system. The fire protection picks any sparks up. Once the spark is detected, it sprays water in a certain area to stop the plant catching fire. This is the next stage of the process, what we call the primary screen. It is fed from the bottom of the hammer mills through a bucket elevator down a chute onto a screen. The screen is a series of holes which allows the rubber crumb to fall through but stops the steel and the fibre from passing through into the rest of the process. This is then removed at the very end of the screen. The fibre is removed via a conveyor belt outside for further process and the steel is removed by a magnetic belt which then takes the steel away up the conveyor belt which you can see by here for further process also. Here we have the dryer. After being frozen and the metal and the fibre being parted, all the rubber, oversized and good, comes through the dryer. At this point, the dryer is roughly 30 degrees, which takes all the moisture out before going to the first screen. This here is our oversized screen. The oversized screen is fed from the dryer via bucket elevator and auger. It travels through the metal detector and down into this vibrating blue screen. The main role of this blue screen is to remove any oversized crumb. What we call oversized is over five millimeters. Five millimeters and below 
is what we can use and sell. The oversized crumb travels across the top of the screen, which then in turn gets sieved out and gets taken back up into the process to ensure there is no waste. The good crumb, which is below 5mm, which is saleable, is then falls through the screen and then goes on to the next stage of our process. The next part of the process is called the classifier. All the rubber, 5mm and below, which comes from the oversized table, is entered into here, and in here there's a series of screens which grades out all the different sizes, which in turn exit out into an airlock and blown over to the last stage of the process into the holding tanks. From the blowers, the crumb is then transferred through the pipework into the silos beside me. There is an individual silo for each individual grade which we make. The crumb is then transferred from the bottom of the silo via an auger. The auger then carries the material up to the top above the ton bags. Each bag is placed on top of a weighing scales which is integrated into the unit. Finally the crumb is loaded into the ton bags or the 25 kilo bags depending on the customer. Here we have our quality office. In here we do quality checks on the crumb that we produce. These checks are done on a daily basis just to ensure that we have the correct consistency within each grade that we produce. Each grade is put through a series of sieves as you can see by here. 500 grams is put on the top sieve. The nest of sieves is then placed into this unit which agitates them. Through this process the smaller crumb will fall through. After five minutes of being agitated a check will be done on all the weights within each sieve. Within this, we should see the right balance of the right size crumb for each of our grades should be contained within it, which is then stored and recorded. These samples are then kept in our archives. As you can see, all our sizes are color coded. They're all used in different applications. The most popular being the green 0.63 to 1.4 used by field turf for the playing pitches and acid turfs. We can see the applications where rubber is used in playgrounds and parks as well as on training grounds in Premiership football clubs and rugby clubs, including the WRU training facilities. All made possible by using recycled tyres, which would otherwise be discarded. Tyregenics is committed to high-quality recycling, providing our clients with versatile, high-quality rubber products. Tyregenics clients include Field Turf, Palace Chemicals and Play for Wales. We hope you enjoyed the tour around our cryogenic plant. And then for any more information, please visit our website. From myself and Mark, we'd just like to say thank you and goodbye.